Hi, I'm Ida Rodriguez. I love my kids, but they never leave. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually good that it was Wilco, because yeah. that's the place where a yeah. sad boy with Other a beard. Other men are crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I look at them sometimes, and I'll be like, they would never survive my life. <laughs> <laughs> also, what are drugs? <laughs> Elton John was right. According to TikTok, I'm dead. But, um, <laughs> you know. Folks, welcome to I Love My Kid, but the show that will make you realize you're not doing it so badly. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, here with my co-hosts, of course, uh, Chris Garcia and Megan Gailey. Hello, guys. Hi. Hi how yeah. are you? Hi. I'm good. I'm good. I'm tired. I'm ready to go. I'm. All, we're always tired, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got so little sleep the night before that last night I took half of a Unisom. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? A unisom. It's an over like, the counter. Yeah, it's an over over the counter like um, nausea sleep aid. It's like what they <laughs> tell pregnant women to take, and I took half of one, and I'm not alive right now. Like, <laughs> did it really <laughs> knock you out? Oh my god, it knocks me out so intensely. Oh wow! And like, I I suffer. Like, nine hours wow well yeah because cj was coming back in town late last Mm -hmm. night and i was like you better believe you're getting up early (laughs) Uh, (laughs) we're going through some sort of sleep regression and then um i had i had conrad at home all day with me yesterday because we went to see your very lovely uh doctor you recommended in the middle of the day and then he skipped his nap yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's a and good I, feeling. And I was just like, I'm going to lose my fucking <laughs> mind. <laughs> so I took half of an over the counter oh. nausea medicine. <laughs> you look refreshed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Drugs work well on you. I, they, I, I'm susceptible, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, episode is sponsored by Unisom. <laughs> I'm writing it down. When um, you really want to clock out, Unisom's there for you, pal. <laughs> uh, this week, our guest is Ada Rodriguez, which is very exciting. Super funny stand up. She's so funny. I'm very excited to talk <laughs> to her. She's so good. She's so raw. So that's yeah. awesome. That's you know, going to be really going to pull good. any punches. Yeah, I'm good. Like, good. Because I don't need punches pulled. I need them to connect. And you know I'm always excited when we have a mom here. Even one of the even one of the reviewers were like, more moms, please. More moms. And it's like, we know. <laughs> Longer, more moms. Um, and today we're going to be talking about uh, going through difficult times and how you kind of parent through difficult times. And, uh, and of course, we start the show the way we start the show every time with a little thing we like to call circle time. And circle time today is story... Chris, I believe you're up for circle time. Ah, uh, it is my circle time. Um, and we're going to be talking about parenting when our, when our own parents aren't doing well, um, which is what I'm going through right now. I'm so I, uh, sorry. It's okay, buddy. I just found out that my mom has cancer. Uh, <sighs> and it's tough, you know? And uh, I know you've gone through it, mm-hmm. Kurt. But... Um, yeah. Anyway, so it, uh, it was a couple weeks ago, my mom calls and she tells me that she has cancer and um, it's out of the blue, you know? Yeah. And I've seen, my dad had Alzheimer's disease and that, um, you see it coming, you know, it, it took 10 years yeah. and, um, but you, you know, you know when it's coming, when the end is coming and I was just. I think I was naive to think that my mom would live forever. Mm-hmm. Sir, all the women in her family live in to her 90s. And she's not dead. She's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> but like just the possibility of mortality and my mom, uh, that's, that's my dude. That's that's my little buddy. You know, I, she's, she, she FaceTimes me from the toilet and she talks <laughs> crazy to Sonny. Like, she talks like fucking Adam Sandler to him half of the time. She's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> And all this stuff, but she's my best friend. She's my hero. She's incredible, right? So she gives me the news, and uh, I try to. I'm like, I gotta be tough for mom. I just gotta be tough. Mm-hmm. So I'm just gonna listen, and I'm not gonna break down. Yeah. Even though that's 
that's my thing. I'm the she calls I'm a yorong, which is I'm a crybaby, <laughs> and that's that's what I am. She's like, oh, you know, it's a thing, you know. Is you, were, were were you able to like, keep it together on the phone? I was, you but are? it was it was weird. I felt like Dexter or something. Like it was oh, clinical. Yeah. Thank uh-huh. you. They and just she's like, uh, could you maybe cry a little bit? <laughs> yeah. uh, you're my crybaby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you let me give me a little something. Me, is everything okay? <laughs> Do you have it too? What's going on? Uh, but I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, mom. You know, I'm like shocked. Yeah. What? You know? What the fuck do you say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm apologetic, and I'm just listening, and I could hear in her voice that she doesn't want to tell me, uh, and I'm I'm consoling her, but not breaking down. And um, in my classic mom way, who is the queen of gallows humor, uh, you know, we're discussing what the details are. And she's like, um, it's in my uterus. And I'm like, oh, mom, uh, like, I'm so uh, I'm so sorry. And then she's like, I know. I wanted another baby. <laughs> No, no, she, she did it. My mom no. is like, this is how my mom, my mom is just like, <laughs> at the darkest hour. Yeah, she no, is, but that's like, but that, but then you're like, oh, okay, like, she's sick, but she's still my mom. She, and so then at, that's beautiful, but also heartbreaking, too. Yeah, she, she, she's still got it, you know? Yeah. She's yeah. still like, this. she shoots from the hip yeah. in yeah. the darkest. So I'm like, oh, and I'm laughing, and I know that makes her feel good because yeah. she's a naturally funny person and yeah. we get she's energy. A comedian. She's a comedian, yeah. right? And I just say, Mom, uh, you're just gonna, you're gonna kick this thing's ass like you've kicked everything's ass that's been a terrible thing that's been thrown at you in this life and uh, it, it's gonna be okay, Mom, you know? And uh, and like, okay, I'll face FaceTime later um, with Sunny after dinner like we do. And so uh, I tell her I, I love her and I say, see you later, which is yeah. like what I'd say to my dad when <laughs> he had Alzheimer's because I didn't want to say goodbye because I didn't know if he was going to die. So yeah. I just say, see you later instead of goodbye. And I, I, that like shook me. Um, and um, I was like, all right, mom, um, I, I'll talk to you later. Okay, love you. And then I hung up and I just fell to pieces in a way I haven't. I haven't cried since my dad died even yeah. more. Yeah. You know, uh, it's different when it's when it's your mom as close and I, as my dad and I were. And so, but, you know, Val knows. She's in the other room. She knows and she gives me a big hug and I'm just trying to keep it together. And I'm just trying to um, go go on with the day, you know? Like, I'm in shock. I'm devastated. I am falling apart. And... Uh, She's like, do you want me to, like an hour later, she's like, do you want me to pick up Sunny? I was like, no, I got it. Uh, I got this, right? So I know I got to be, I know I got to be strong for my mom and I got to be strong for Sunny, you know? Uh, um, I'm her her dad and I don't want her to see me like this. So I go to pick her up and uh, it's fine, you know? I drive her home. Uh, we come home and it's so far so good. I make dinner, which mm-hmm. I do, and I'm supposed to go see Wilco. <laughs> that <laughs> night? Oh, that night, boy. you oh, know? Man. It was my childhood best friend who I don't want to tell about this. Uh, I don't want to, I'm not ready to talk to him. Because he knows, he knows your mom. Yeah, he knows my mom since we were 15 years Jesus old. Wilco's Christ. pretty emo too, you know? I know. I mean. It's a lot. To throw Let's Wilco. Let's go see some like party music, but like. Let's go see Usher in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, please. That would be Wilco. amazing. It's heavy already. At and least the- it's not the national. If you told me you're going <laughs> to see the national, I would have been like, oh, you're not going to make it out of that show. But you Wilco- know Wilco's a bunch of mama's boys. <laughs> oh, I, that, it's exactly what it is. But I uh, was supposed to see Wilco, but I'm like, okay, uh, one. I'm just going to, right now, I'm just going to make dinner. I, I think, I don't know, I'm going to go to this concert. And I, I make dinner. It's um, a burger and uh, grilled zucchini. And I'm trying to make it, and uh, I'm just uh, doing a bad job. I can't seem to get it together. Val had already seasoned the zucchini and oiled it, and I had oiled the pan not noticing this, and I, there's a lot of oil in this pan, <laughs> and there's a, I start a mini grease fire, you know? And oh, it, wow. And I'm, and like, I'm, it's not a big deal. Yeah. And so I'm cooking this burger, 
Uh, trying to keep it together. Trying not to cry. I got teardrops. Um, and then sit down for dinner, and um, we eat dinner, and, and you know, I'm just being quiet. And Sunny, she could sense that something's off, you know. Um, and we FaceTime with my mom, and my mom is uh, <laughs> you know, she's like, oh, I want some to like Sunny's <laughs> oh, dinner, uh-huh. like she always does. And, and Sunny <laughs> sometimes, like a lot of kids, she gets sick of FaceTime, and so she's yeah. like, no. Oh, she's no. Like, and she just learned the word ooh. And she's like, ew, uh, no. And I'm like, oh, God, can you please, uh, yeah. please not do this right now? But I can't show her this, right? Yeah. And I can't, I don't want to yell. She doesn't know what the fuck's going on, but I also don't want to project this doom and gloom and stuff onto her. And my mom is very understanding. She goes on just like she always does. She knows that Sunny's being fussy. She's like, okay, I'll, I'll talk to you guys. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm like, okay, bye. And I'm like, Sunny, saying I love you. And she's like, no. Ah! And I'm like, oh, God, please, not right now. But uh, I'm like, okay, I love you, Bob. I'll talk to you later. And then uh, I just sit there and I just like quietly start crying, you know. And Sunny, uh, Sunny's like, Dada? What's wrong, Dada? Dada crying? I'm like, I don't want to. You know, I don't know what effect this is going to have on her or anything. It's just one of those moments you're like, what do you do? But I'm like, yeah, Dada's crying. She's like, why Dada crying? And I'm like, Dada's having a tough time. Dada's having a tough time today. And she puts her little head on my head and like my arm, and she's like, kiss it. She kisses it. She's like, it's okay, Dada. And uh, it was a wild moment as a parent because... For a moment, I felt like I was falling apart and doing everything bad. But to feel Sunny there and to see her have this empathy that was so sweet, that was so nurturing and so beautiful, it just felt like everything was wrong and terrible and then everything was beautiful because <laughs> and it's just to think that by me, Ex- being myself and allowing myself to be vulnerable and um, cry in front of her maybe um, will allow her to be herself and cry in front of me. Mm-hmm. Maybe like I couldn't when I was a kid or my mom couldn't or my dad couldn't. And it yeah. just felt like this beautiful release of, I don't know what, <laughs> like fucking, it felt like Encanto or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It was like, is some trauma? Is the circle of trauma been broken? <laughs> broken? <laughs> but um, just to, um, just that, it just felt like it was, it, it was a, it was a tough day, and it was a beautiful moment, and it was okay to fall apart in front of my kid, and and she, I was like, we did something right. You know, yeah. it's not all on us that she's an empathetic, cool kid, but it comes from somewhere and it comes from the love that Val and my mom and dad and they've put in us and now it's in her and that that type of thing never really dies. You know, it goes on to gen- to future generations. And um, then I go see Wilco <laughs> <laughs> and I cry in my IPA silently. Uh-huh. But that's what happened. But you didn't tell your buddy. I didn't tell my buddy. I couldn't tell him. I wasn't ready. I I couldn't say anything for a couple weeks. Yeah. You know, I couldn't tell him. And I just cried and it felt, it felt at home. It was actually good that it was Wilco. Yeah. Because that's the place where a sad boy with a beard. Other men are crying. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A bunch of dads are crying. A lot of dads are crying at that concert. So I felt less alone. But. On the drive in this morning, I uh, my mom, by the way, is loving this because <laughs> I now I used to call her every day and FaceTime every day. Yeah. And now it's like three times a day, so she's in fucking heaven. She's like, ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, so I call her on the way, and I'm like, mommy, how did you do it? How did you parent during difficult times? And mm-hmm. like, she lost both of her parents, was a caretaker to both of her parents and my dad, and they all died within three years of each wow. other. And I was like, how did you do it? She's like, you know, you just have to have faith. 
you have to have faith that things are going to be okay. And, um, and un día a la vez, one day at a time. You got to take things one day at a time. And uh, you can't forget to laugh. Thank you for listening, everybody. Yeah, and no. I'm sorry, uh, you know, I'm sorry for the people watching this on YouTube. It is it is ugly over <laughs> here. I, I Please be nice in the comments. And if you're going through stuff like this out there, our listeners and... Um, either with your, yourself or your kid or anyone anyone in your life, have faith and don't forget to laugh, you know? It does, though. Like, that whole idea that you're talking about of, like, in that moment of seeing, like, the full, I mean, like, I hate to say circle, circle of, of life. life. Ugh, I know. I hate to say it, but it's like that's the parts that all of a sudden come in and you're like, oh, okay. Like Elton the idea John of- was right. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to bring Elton John into this? Yes. <laughs> We do. He invented the circle of life. <laughs> he invented it. I do have to say, as like, you know, if I can make this about me, um, <laughs> to see like two sons of moms, I'm like, God, I hope Conrad is like this obsessed with me. You know? like, I hope he loves me this much. And like right now, I don't think he does. <laughs> so I'm like, I got to get to the point where he's willing to cry on a podcast for me. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever his version of a podcast yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. He has to cash <laughs> a, in the crypto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a direct feeling experience through your headset. Um, well, this is, thank you, Chris, so much for telling us that story. And we'll be right back with Ada Rodriguez. So you heard today's guest earlier in the show. She's a very funny comedian. She also has a new book, Legitimate Kid, a Memoir. And she's a mom of two children. Please welcome to the show, Ada Rodriguez. Hi, how are you? How are you? It's Ida. I'm so sorry, no, no, Ida. No, um, so Ida, walk us through your stats here. How old are your kids? My kids are old. They're grown ups. <laughs> and so, you know, my kids, my daughter's 27 and my son is 31. And, but, you know, my career wow. in comedy didn't take off until, until I started talking about them. <laughs> and so it's funny because we, we grew up together. We And my daughter still lives with me, so I'm still parenting her. Do you think it's a cultural thing for kids to live with their parents, uh, Latino kids? Because my parents always expected me to live a, as an adult. But you kind of live at home until you get married. or, or Yes, you're... the machismo in our community is, in our culture, is, uh, you know, you're not going to be safe until there's a man to take care of you. Um, I mean, I think I imagine how fun it must be when you're a lesbian and you're saying, hey, I'm moving in with another girl. <laughs> <laughs> do you love having do you love having your your 27 year old there? I do because she has a really good job. <laughs> yeah, she does. She's a writer. She actually just wrote an episode of Doom Patrol, which airs airs today on HBO Max. Oh, oh, that's no. okay. Yeah, it's pretty dope. I, you know, I, I grew up in a village setting, this community setting. That's how we, everybody's nearby. You know, you, you, you check in on your grandparents. The uncles are not that far away. Everybody's in everybody's business kind of. So it doesn't feel, it feels like home to me because I grew up in Miami. And so being in California, that kind of feeds that feeling of, the village for me. Mm-hmm. At the top of the show, I I shared some um, difficult uh, news, some personal news. You've been a parent for a long time, and you've had to parent through very difficult situations. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering how you um you you're so inspiring and you're so amazing. I just wonder how you parent through all these difficult times. I've only been in the game for two and a half nice. years. You've been a parent for a while. How do you do it? How do you parent through tough times like this, and while you're taking care of your own parent? You know, um, it's been really hard, honestly. I took on at a very young age the feeling that I had to take care of her. And Mm -hmm. it was my mom was really young when she had me. And I've always felt this sense of obligation to make sure she's okay. I used to like stand in front of her if she would have like a an argument with somebody when I was little, I would get in the way and be like, look, don't talk to my mommy like that. You know, it was, I've, I've been like, that, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like my whole life. And when you have kids, you know, in the, in the Latino culture, we really are indoctrinated into 
our kids come before everybody. Our kids come before our spouses. They come before our parents. Mm-hmm. And if not, then you're judged for it not being that way. You know, like there, there's this big idea of what, you know, how, how, how you take care of your kids. They have to eat all their food, eat the food off the plate. They can't be skinny. You know, there's this, there's all this stuff that I think comes from trauma. Like, you know, the, the, uh, they, if they're dirty, they're not, you know, they can be outside playing, but the, your kids got to be clean. Cause if not, you're not a good parent. And, you know, the, the battle between me feeling like I'm, I'm a good daughter taking care of my mother and the, a good do- a good mother taking care of my children at the same time was really overwhelming for me. Um, because nothing's ever good enough. And that can be such uh, pressure to live under just, just trying to live. And so um, it was, it's been, you know, has been very difficult. I still feel like I have to take care of my mother. I'll call my mom, you know, in a little bit and say, what did you eat today? You know, have you been drinking your water? Like, and so, so on and so forth. The fortunate thing for me is that my kids are like really great human beings and they are now the ones checking in on me mm-hmm. saying, Hey, have you eaten? Have you been drinking water? They do it with their friends. That is just who they are as people. Um, and I guess for me, I think the biggest challenge of it all is not, um, I don't want to, I don't want to put that on my kids so that I don't want them to feel like they have to take care of me because I want them to live their lives. Cause I know how much, how much of how heavy that's mm-hmm. been for me to feel like I got to take care of my mom and I want them to just live their lives. Like, I, I, you know, I do the opposite of my mother. I work out, I, I drink water. I'm, you know, I'm self-sufficient. I take care of myself, even though, I mean, I shouldn't be falling apart at this age, even though, you know, according to TikTok, I'm dead, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a very, uh, just a very interesting balance because, you know, you want to break the cycles of dysfunction and, and within our community, that is something very common. Like, the grandparents are right around the corner. And if you don't go see your grandparents on Sunday, then you are a shitty person. And I I do want them to have a sense of community. I want them to have a sense of family, but I don't want them to feel the obligation to take care of me because, um, you know, I, I left home very young, but I still always feel like if I don't take care of my mother, then I'm a bad daughter. I feel that big time. And even with it's so funny you talking uh, about like the pressure and like the shame people yeah. put on to you if you're not like a good uh, kid to your parents, to your mom. Some of that comes from my mom herself, yeah. right? And so <laughs> I think uh, just a couple years ago or after my daughter was born, we would FaceTime. I used to talk to my mom a couple times a week, right? Which is pretty good. You know, that, that's good. And then it became every day and Mm -hmm. then it became every day over FaceTime and so now I will call my mom on the phone and not on FaceTime she's like hey boy por que no me llama por FaceTime que pasa I'm like mom I used to call you once a week if that in college now we FaceTime you she's like no okay okay and you can hear her like okay mm -hmm." I just that little that little sound I'm like oh god the guilt (laughs) the guilt mom I talk to my mom constantly it's definitely been ramped up since having a child and my older brothers they have kids but i talked to my mom i I talked i called her three times yesterday she's a nurse which is like a really good way to make sure your kids have to talk to you because you need medical advice constantly (laughs) so if you're looking for a profession to go into where your children will be tethered to for life it's nursing (laughs) um but i i had a therapist once say to me like you are not in charge of your mom's happiness and 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 I like took it in and then and I'm nodding and then I'm also like this is why my husband's mom didn't let him go to therapy you know like they are, <laughs> this is why this is why Filipinos are like no you don't need to go to therapy because it's like they're gonna try and break those generational like holds where yeah. it's like yeah some cultures are like we want the generational hold yeah yeah I had a my therapist was like, it's basically told me the same thing. And I was like, that's the one thing you're wrong about. I think yeah. I am responsible for it, you know, and it's really, it's really hard. It's a really hard dance, you mm-hmm. know, because we aren't, respons- aren't responsible, but we want to show up for them, you know. Even though your kids are older, do, does the parenting ever like taper off or is it still like you're st- Oh, man, yeah, I knew I'm the excited. answer. I see you shaking your head. I'm like, so there's no retiring. My son called me. So my son is 31. He lives on his own. 
and you know he's dating mm-hmm. he has a girlfriend you know it, it's funny because like uh we're we were at the at a gas station one time and this random man just started talking to him and I jumped out of the car and he was like get back in the car mom don't <laughs> emasculate me you know <laughs> always telling me you know I'm an adult I'm a grown man and then a couple of months ago I get a phone call and I I answer it and I hear wailing and I'm like what's going on? Hello? Who's this? Like Omar. And he's like, I feel sick. I need you to take me to the hospital. And I'm like, I I don't want to emasculate you. Like you're a grown man. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you know, and and I went to the hospital. Then I'm at Kaiser a few, a couple of hours later demanding that they see him. (laughs) And the lady that's in the emergency room with her eight-year-old son is looking at me like, you guys are creepy. You no. know? <laughs> She's probably looking at you like, oh, no, I thought this was going to be done in yeah. 10 years. <laughs> um, uh, Ida, so uh, I know that you, your kids are older, um, but is we have a thing called the struggle wand. And, you know, because we're always talking about that, you know, the struggles of parents. And are, is there anything that you're currently struggling with as a parent? Yeah, you know, uh, watching them make really bad decisions and having to sit by and watch it. <laughs> you have to sit by yeah, and watch yeah. because you have to you you have Ugh. to trust in in your stock. You know, this you you have to trust in what you've done and say, I did the job. So now these decisions are a result of I have to let it play out sometimes. And sure, I give some counsel, but there's pushback. So it's really hard sometimes to watch them make, you know, like I, we grew up very differently. I grew up in a very Latino household and I grew up, um, you know, I started working when I was 14. The, the, the idea of what, and it's sure we had privilege because we all have privilege, but the idea of privilege for me versus what it looks like for them is very different. And so I look at them sometimes and I'll be like, they would never survive my life. Like, they just <laughs> yeah. They would never, they wouldn't survive a day in my shoes. And that's, that's arrogant. Sometimes I don't give them as much credit, but the fact that they, you know, they, they just have so much access to things that I never did. And it's really hard to watch sometimes because, you know, they walk about the earth thinking nothing will ever happen to them. And it's because they, they felt secure where I thought something will always happen to me. I was yeah, waiting yeah. on the other shoe to drop. They don't. They just are, they're like, doom, de doom, de doom, de doom. Like they just walk about the planet just like, oh, <laughs> and you know, and my son is like, I, he's not on social media. He's like, I rebuke social media. I don't want that negativity in my psyche. You know, like, and I'm like, but you don't know like <laughs> that, that there's a murderer on the loose on your block, you know? And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, we're going to do one more thing, uh, which is called Time Out. Um, and it's anything that you, uh, you just can't take anymore about life or parenting. You want to put it in a timeout. Uh, we'll go first, and then um, you can go last, uh, Ida. Uh, anybody want to go first here? Mine's going to sound so selfish on the on the heels of everything we've talked <laughs> about today. And you know what? I'm totally at peace with that. Um, I would like to put in time out me having to cancel my plans. <laughs> my son's plans never canceled. Go off without a hitch. I had four things I needed to do on Saturday, which is you know, testing the limits, obviously. But I was like, law of averages, I'll get to worst case scenario, I'll get to do one of them. All four out the window. (laughs) Didn't get to do one thing on the calendar that day. We've now we've now taken to just going, you're doing errands with us. Like they it used to be for like a year, like two years. It was always just like, well, all right, we're going to do something fun today, you know, on the weekend. And now it's like you're coming to Target and then you're going to the store and then you're coming home and you're not doing anything. (laughs) Um, I'm going to put I'm going to put LAUSD telling my first grader about drugs. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Olive came home and she had signed this she had signed a 
a piece of paper that said, I will live a drug free life. <laughs> no. And she's like, um, she just like was like, she came in, she's like, I'm against drugs, dad. <laughs> and I and and I was like, uh-huh. And she's like, also, what are drugs? <laughs> And I was like, why is why does first grade have to sign this I'm I'm not gonna do drugs thing before anybody knows what drugs That's are? That's wild. Yeah, and so now we have to like so then <laughs> Laura Olive asked Lauren and Lauren was like, you know, honey, I would like to give you a proper description of this and it's going to take me a little while of looking it up on the internet to see how to talk to you about <laughs> yeah. this because it was just like I don't know how to tell you about drugs nah. I'm not the person to do that but no but now we have like we looked it up and now we have like a thing <laughs> that we're prepared to say to her oh boy. I'm going to put uh, how you know we've talked about all this, a lot of serious stuff today uh, but my I will like to put on time out the smell of abandoned banana that's Ooh. what I'm going to go with yes. just like a it, in the just car. In the car. It could be in the car, in the back, a smushed in the back seat of the car. It's ninety degrees in Los Angeles. It could be one that you leave in the diaper bag. Ooh, yeah, or yeah. one Ugh. rotting on the counter. It always just makes me feel as if it's indicative of me being a bad parent or my own <laughs> mind decaying itself. Uh-huh. And I just I hate bananas. I, I they're not even that good for you. They keep your kid from <laughs> shitting. I don't see they're easy to open and that's it. But I could be fine with no bananas. Bananas ever. Uh, plantains are fine. Plantains is <laughs> plantains is the blood of my people. But your regular yellow bananas, get and they don't it. rot. Plantains don't rot. They'll just stay there for forever. <laughs> they stay there forever, and then you just cook them different ways. That's it. <laughs> Ida. So um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna think retroactively here. Uh, go back in time. I would love to put all the nannies on timeout and have these bitches fend for themselves with their own kids. <laughs> That's what I would love to do. Let you figure out what your own kid is allergic to. I had to sit by and watch all of these middle class, upper class, rich bitches wonder what their kid was allergic to while I knew exactly what was going on in every single aspect of my kid's life. And I felt so jealous so I would love to put all these nannies on timeout and let you see. Let's see what you're working with. Let's see what you're really working with. Uh, well, thank you so much for being here on the show. Anything you want to plug before you go? Sure. Let me plug my book, Legitimate Kid, yeah. which I'm really bad at plugging. Um, and I also grew up without my dad and so did my mom. So I, I wrote a book about it and I, I talk about my kids in the book. So wherever books are sold. Well, thank you so much for coming on congrats the show. Congrats on the book. Too. Yeah. And yeah, congrats, congrats to your daughter on her episode. That's amazing. Thank yeah. you. That was great. That was really great. That was, yeah, that was, um, that was our most emotional episode yet. I How felt are you like doing? a perfect thank you. I'm doing good. I feel yeah. good. It really helps. Um, I, I, you know, you get scared about sharing stuff yeah. like this, but um, I, I shared it today, and I'm very grateful for for y'all. And I that was like the perfect guest to have in yeah. the situation. Yeah. So, except to remind us that our children are always going to be our children. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, which is beautiful and terrifying. <laughs> Uh, and remember, if you want to have your uh, your stories here on the show, you can by calling us at four two four five seven zero kids. It's four two four five seven zero kids, or you can email us at i love my kid at wondery dot com. And just make sure you start it with i love my kid, but and uh, maybe we'll play it on the show just like this. Good morning, I love my kid, but I may have overdone it when they were little. With clapping during getting injured. So when my daughter was born, uh, we were trying to mitigate crying over like little boo-boos when we fall down. And we would just clap and be like, yay, you're totally fine. Clap, clap, clap. You did it. Totally fine. Well, then we went to a mommy and me yoga class. And one little kid about the same age, they were all around like 12 to 18 months in there, just tripped and ate it just right into her face. Oof. And my daughter stood up and gave her the biggest round of applause <laughs> I've ever heard. And I'm pretty sure I could feel laser beams coming out of the other mom's eyeballs at me. As all of my other friends were just cackling under their breaths because they thought it was hilarious. So, you know, note to other parents, clapping 
will dissipate the reaction to a fall. However, they may also cheer for others getting injured. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Love the show. It's my favorite podcast. Aww. You make my entire week every time. Oh, Aww. that's so awesome. That is so funny because so it's funny. such a great idea. At first, I was like, that's such a great idea. Yeah. And then the flip side is your child seems like a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, your child is like a professional wrestler, like a heel And I'm like, bully. do I need to be wearing a mommy and me yoga? Because I'm not even going to me yoga. <laughs> And I commend you for going to Mommy and Me Yoga. And to take a kid to yoga is like the exact opposite of the intended results of <laughs> yoga. So yeah, good for that. It it's is incredible really that you're doing that. Olive <laughs> Olive does yoga in, in public school. Yeah, she learns about drugs and she does yoga. <laughs> Yogas yeah. and drogas. <laughs> Yogas that's how we and do. drogas. <laughs> it is a dual language immersion <laughs> Spanish class. So that is yeah. what it's called. Yogas and drogas. Uh well, uh, thank you guys. Uh, any, any, any plugs? Huh? Pluggy plug plugs? Um, I'd like to plug. You know, since we're talking about uh, my mom and my family, I think it would be a, a nice plug to yes. listen to my first podcast ever, which is a, a like a mini docu series about the story of my mom and dad, and um, it's called Scattered, and it's six episodes, and it's uh, it's I'm very proud of it, and then you can get to know how, how amazing my mom and dad. It's, Yay. it's so good. Too. Oh, thank you. It's really great. Yay. And uh, I'm Kurt Brownler. I'm Chris Garcia. I'm Megan Gailey. And remember, your kid is going to eventually resent you no matter what you do. Sunday.